In the next section, we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing rational expressions, and we're going to do everything in comparison with what we would do with fractions. So when I multiply these two fractions, what I would do is reduce any common factors by dividing out a 3 out of the 6 and the 9. Let's divide a 3 out. It's going to leave us with uh, 3 on the bottom and 2 on the top. And once I've divided out all common factors, then I would proceed with my multiplication and do 5 times 2 is 10 on the top, and 3 times 7 is 21 on the bottom. All right, so that was the process I would use with regular fractions, and that's the same process that we're going to use with rational expressions. So when I'm multiplying rational expressions, I multiply the tops together and I multiply the bottoms together. So the result would be P times R over Q times S, and the steps are going to be, I know I want to reduce my expression, and I know I can't do that until I've factored everything. So we're going to factor first, then divide the, ra the numerators and denominators by common factors. This is the reduce step. And then finally, multiply the remaining factors on the top and on the bottom, like we would do with fractions. Multiply the remaining factors in the numerator and multiply the remaining factors in the denominator. So let's go ahead and look at an example. So the very first thing I need to do is make sure that everything is factored. Now the numerator of the first is just an x, so I don't have to worry about factoring that. The denominator is a binomial, it's a difference of squares, so that I can factor as x plus 2 and x minus 2. Alright, times, alright. Uh, the top of the second fraction is a trinomial with coefficient 1, so when I factor I'm going to start with an x in each parenthesis. And I have an 8. I need to break up that 8. It's going to have to be two negatives because it's a positive 8 and it needs to add to a negative 6. And 4 and 2 go into 8, and 4 and 2 add 6. So if I check it again, negative 4 plus negative 2 is a negative 6, and a negative 4 times a negative 2 is a positive 8. All right. Then for the denominator, x plus 5 is not factorable. It's just going to stay the same. So let's look for any common factors that I can divide out of top and bottom. Okay, so across the top, I've got an x, an x minus 4, and an x plus, or minus 2. So the x minus 2's will divide out. I don't have any x plus 2's, and I don't have any x plus 5's, so it's like nothing else will divide out. So my answer is, on the top, x times x minus 4 over x plus 2 times x plus 5. Now, I am not going to multiply this out. We're not using the distributive property here because it's better factored. When it's factored, you can see easily that it is already reduced. And anytime I want to do anything with this, if I want to solve it, I have to have it factored anyway. So there's no need to use a distributive property. Leave it factored. So let me write that up here. Leave the product factored. leave the product factored. Alright, let's look at the next page. Alright, so in the numerator of the first one, 2x minus 7, that doesn't factor. x cubed is just one term, doesn't factor. x to the fourth is one term, doesn't factor. And 3x plus 5, nothing in common, doesn't factor. So this one here is already factored, so we're going to look for things that we can reduce. Okay, the only thing a 2x minus 7 would cancel with is another 2x minus 7. So I can't cancel that, I can't divide that out. The only thing a 3x plus 5 would reduce with is another 3x plus 5. So I'm left with just the monomials. The monomial pieces do cancel. I've got 4x's on the top and 3 on the bottom. So if I cancel these 3 out of these 4, I'm going to be left with 1x on the top. So my answer here is going to be x times 2x minus 7 on the top. It doesn't really matter what order I write those in, but usually if we have a monomial, we write the monomial first in the product over the 3x plus 5. And that's done. Okay, so let's try the next one. The next one does have some factoring that we can do. If I notice, the first one is a uh, binomial, like these ones over here were in number a, letter A. But where these didn't have anything in common and couldn't factor, I can factor GCF out of this one. I can factor out of 5. It's going to leave me with x minus 3. Now the bottom is just a 7. I can't factor the 7. 
The top is just 21x, that can't be factored, it's only a monomial. And the bottom, I can factor 2 out to leave me with 2 times x minus 3. So let's see what we can divide out. There's an x minus 3 on top and bottom, let's divide that out. And then in these monomials here, again, they're monomials, so there's only just a single term in each of them, I can divide out a 7 from both of those. So that's going to leave me with 5 times 3x on the top. 5 times 3 is 15, x on the top, and the bottom, just a 2. So the behavior with monomials is exactly like it's going to be with regular fractions. The behavior with bi or trinomials, I have to make sure I cancel only factors. That's why I really am concerned with my factoring. Alright, so let's look at the next two. The next two are all bi or trinomials. So in the top of the first one, it's a trinomial. We're going to factor that by, uh, there's coefficient 1, so we're going to start each parenthesis off with an x. 9, so 9 breaks into 3 and 3, and 3 plus 3 is 6. Then in the bottom of that first fraction, there's no squares, but you can take out a 5. So it's going to leave us with 4x minus 3. Then in the next one, there's a square, but there's an x over here also, so I'm going to take out a GCF of 2x. It's going to leave me with 4x minus 3. And the bottom binomial, difference of squares, so x plus 3 and x minus 3. Alright, so let's see what we can reduce. 4x minus 3 and 4x minus 3 x plus 3 and x plus 3. It didn't matter which of those x plus 3's I crossed off, just one of the ones on the top with one on the bottom. Okay, and my monomials, 5 and 2x, can't reduce, so that's good. What I'm left with on the top is 2x times x plus 3, and the bottom, 5 times x minus 3. So again, just to check to make sure it's reduced, any monomial factor can be reduced like a regular fraction, can't be reduced. Any binomials would have to be exactly the same in order to reduce, and those aren't. Okay, so let's try the next one. Let me grab a different color. Okay, so the next one we've got a trinomial, coefficient 1, so we're going to start with t in each parenthesis. Uh, 10. Okay, so 10 is 5 and 2. If we want that to be a negative 3, it better be a negative 5 and a positive 2. Now the bottom of that second, um, sorry, the bottom of that first um, trinomial is going to require us to factor by either trial and error or by grouping. So I'm going to go ahead and try trial and error. It starts off with a 2t, so the only one to make a 2t is with a 2t and a 1t. And we need to try to make a 9 with a 4 um, and that 2t, so let's see. Let's try 2 and 2 for that 4 first. We gotta check. So that's gonna give us 4t and 2t. And by the way, those were addition and negative, so those need to both be negatives. Okay, so that will give us, so far, a negative 6t. So that does not work. So we better erase. 2 and 2 doesn't work. Now I don't have to switch 2 and 2 because if I switch the two twos, then we're back to the same thing. So I just have to erase that one and say 2 and 2 doesn't work. The only other way to make a 4 is going to be 4 and 1, so it has to be 4 and 1. But I don't know yet if it's 4 here or 1 there, or vice versa. So let's check. That would be negative 2t minus 4t. Well that's negative 6t again, so that doesn't work. Okay, so 4 and 1 doesn't work. Hopefully 1 and 4 does. So 1 here, 4 there. So now that's going to be negative 4, uh, oops, negative 8t, 2 times 4, minus 1t is negative 9t, and that's what I was trying to get. Alright, so we figured out how to factor it. So that one's done. Again, it takes more time to factor when you have a coefficient that's not 1. So we just need to put that time in and make sure we get that one factored. And we'll look at the next one. Okay, this is a GCF. I can take a 3 
and a T out of both of those. It's going to leave me with 2T minus 1. And T squared minus 4 is a difference of squares. So it's going to be a T plus 2 and a T minus 2. Okay, so let's see what we have to get rid of. All right, we've got a 2t minus 1 on top and bottom, so those will divide out. We've got a t plus 2 on top and bottom, so those will divide out. And everything else looks different. So my final answer is going to be 3t times... Sorry, my pen's lagging a little bit here. 3t times t minus 5. over t minus 4 times t minus 2. There we go. That's our final answer. So 3t, again, it's a monomial. We usually write the monomials first. So 3t times t minus 5 over t minus 4 times t minus 2. All right. So uh, we talked about multiplication. We'll talk about division. So when I'm dividing with regular fractions, we're going to copy the first fraction and flip the second fraction. So it would be 4 ninths times 6 fifths. That's the rule for dividing two fractions. And then I would just follow the rules for multiplication. I would reduce, again, the 9 and 6 can both be divided by 3 to give me 2 and 3. And then finish the multiplication. 4 times 2 is 8 over 3 times 5 is 15. So when I'm dividing with rational expressions, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to first flip, so it's going to be P over Q times S over R, and then multiply the tops together and multiply the bottoms together. Okay, so if I have dividing, I'm going to first write as a product, copy the first fraction, flip the second fraction, and multiply, then find the product as I normally find the product, and make sure it's simplified. So the very first thing to do is to copy the first fraction. Uh, m squared minus 16 over m plus 3. Change it to multiplication and flip the second fraction. m squared minus 9 over m minus 4. Now, since it's a multiplication problem, we're going to factor, reduce, and then multiply. So m squared minus 16 is a difference of squares. m plus 4 minus 4. m plus 3 can't be factored. It's just a binomial with nothing in common. m squared minus 9 is a difference of squares. So m plus 3 and m minus 3. And m minus 4 can't be factored. So the m plus 3s will divide out. The m minus 4s will divide out. And our answer for this one is going to be m plus 4 times m minus 3 over 1. I don't have to write the over 1 since the 1 is in the denominator. So this first example is all monomial. So we're going to flip the second one. Starting with 6x cubed over 5 times 7 over 4x to the fifth. So in the monomials, cancel them like normal fractions. We can divide out a 2 from the 6 and the 4. That's going to be 3 and 2. And we can divide out x cubed and x to the fifth can both be divided by x cubed. So it's going to leave us with x squared in the bottom. The 5 and the 7 don't reduce. And because those are monomials, I can reduce them since they are already a product. That's already 6 times x cubed. So I can reduce 6 and the 4 separately because it's a product of multiplication. And I just have monomials. So on the top, 3 times 7 is 21. On the bottom, 5 times 2 is 10 x squared. So that's reduced. So in the next one, I can factor a little bit. So let me go ahead and flip first going to be 2x plus 2y over 8z times 72 over x squared times x 